People like to talk a lot of hubbub surrounding Hasbro's poor distribution ever since the world's economy shitted itself due to a certain coof going around, and that hubbub is pretty warranted. I don't need to go into just how hard it was to find Earthrise figures that year, and honestly, Legacy's distribution has somehow been every bit as bad, as far as my region's concerned. What people don't seem to remember so much is that these problems were making themselves apparent even before the Karanka, as certain figures from the earliest part of Studio Series proved a bitch and a half to find, with one certain Autobot really taking the cake. Welcome to Kit Catastrophe. My name is Kit, and today we'll be taking a look at Transformers Studio Series 14 Voyager Class Autobot Ironhide. This figure was originally released in 2018 as part of Wave 3 of the Voyager assortment, but was later re-released as part of an Amazon-exclusive 5-pack in late 2022, which is the version I will be covering. This review is the result of a poll which was so close it'll give George Bush a stiffy, and I'll be opening up a new poll at the same time as this video comes out, so go check my community tab. A beefy pickup truck was the perfect alternate mode to give to Ironhide when it was time to adapt him to the silver screen, and this GMC Topkick 4500 was about the best pickup they could have chosen. It's a far cry from Ironhide's original Vanette form, suiting his tough guy machismo much better. I really wish Ironhide's going forward were default to a pickup, or something else sufficiently hardcore, but it looks like Hasbro is too focused on iterating the original design and somehow fucking it up every single time to consider the possibility. As far as I can tell, he's proportioned decently enough, though at times the wheelbase seems far longer than it did on screen, though I have been able to find some outside images that seem to match this toy. Even so, it looks off to my eyes, and it's not helped by his dogs just dangling out from underneath ready for you perverts to suck on. Might as well talk about the bed while we're here, which is completely useless for carrying anything, though given how many people around here buy fuck huge trucks as their daily, I doubt many people who bought the real top kick are hauling much. That big gap just behind the cab is ugly, but a necessary compromise to let Ironhide's knees bend. Not like Ironhide had any real use for his bed anyway, though on this figure there is space for some haphazard weapon storage. I've always appreciated the large embossed Autobot badge on the tailgate. The front of this pugnose some bitch is much more pleasing to look at, with its healthy helping of silver paint and red inked GMC badge on the grill. The orange paint on these indicators here on the fenders chips easily, so it's probably for the best that it was cut from the running lights on the roof for the re-release. Overall, the vehicle mode is pretty decent. It rolls well on the right surfaces, with the only clearance issue to speak of being this bit here in the middle of the chassis that forms part of Ironhide's torso. It's also really solid. None of these locking tabs are going anywhere, though there is a kind of large caveat with that. Going from robot mode to vehicle mode can prove to be a little tricky at times, and these slots on what will be Ironhide's shoulders, which are supposed to lock them into the central spinal column, can get misaligned very easily if you're not paying attention, leading to a small amount of stress. This is really the only issue in an otherwise solid transformation scheme, and it only really matters going in one direction. It really is something of a game of two halves, as from the waist up, Ironhide's transformation is relatively complex and involved, while from the waist down, everything is very simple and straightforward. Neither half feels like it strays too far towards any extreme, though, but they do feel quite distinct from each other. A month ago, I would have complained about clearance issues regarding the chest halves until I realized that Ironhide's head is on a hinged platform that has a far greater range of movement than I realized, so I'll have to come up with some other mistake to drive up this video's engagement. I will say the brake discs are a right bitch to flip out since I suspect the hinge itself got coated in paint, but I think the doors wrapping around his torso and locking the roof in place is such a nice design choice that it makes me not care as much about my lost fingernails. Like I said earlier, the legs are pretty damn simple, but you do sort of have to rotate the outer paneling at the same time as you flip the feet down. It's annoying, but on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd only rate it about a 0.3. It's really satisfying how the bed cover slides into an especially cut groove in the calf. I guess that's the theme of Ironhide's transformation, throwing in some infinitesimally annoying steps followed by extremely satisfying ones. I'd like to keep from equating screen accuracy with quality, and instead focus on what makes a toy good or bad, 
but I can't ignore the fact that Studio Series Ironhide has presented us with a remarkably accurate robot mode, with only a handful of compromises in vehicle mode and a markedly fun transformation. Ironhide's robot mode is peak Autobot badass, with its distinctive cambered hood half chest that I really wish we could see on another design in the future, and it's nice to see it done some real justice as Ironhide's toys in the past have had some serious trouble adapting it into physical form, or at least that's been my experience with Ironhide's toys. I will temper my excitement, however, as the Fender pecs look pretty gargantuan from most angles, going so far as to look more like overblown shoulder pads than part of his torso. It doesn't help that his arms are the wimpiest part of him and are set pretty far backward compared to his center line. I do like the shape of their silhouette with the windows sticking off the elbows, though. The front tires suck in nice and tightly to his abdomen, but the bumper remains unchanged from Vio Commode and sticks out either side like a bone through the nose of a witch doctor. The legs are solid, albeit basic, though I don't like how the taillights rub against each other when Ironhide's in a natural A stance. It just seems like you're asking the paint to chip to me. The sculpted detail is as good as you could hope for. I like these cheekily hidden fake tires making up his hips. They really expect us to believe they're supposed to be that small. Only what I hesitate to call the bare essentials of his sculpt are highlighted with any paint. Like those toes of his that stuck out from beneath the skirt of his veal commode, just begging to be stubbed. Small aside here, but Ironhide's feet are clearly the worst part of his overall design. They're the quintessential visual cacophony the Bayverse is infamous for. Take this piece of concept art for Dark of the Moon. From the top, you get that nice, cohesive robot mode, and then all of a sudden... <laughs> what were they thinking? Anyway, one aspect of a toy which I am perfectly happy seeing the designers try to make as accurate as possible is the head sculpt, something at which Studio Series excels. This pug-nosed pugilist sculpt is dead on, with his face, crest, and earmuffs all coated in a nice silver. I really appreciate the care they took to sculpt it asymmetrically, simulating what appears to be an injured right eye, which I believe he had in Dark of the Moon. Can't confirm for his other two appearances. I understand there's something of a trade-off regarding the silver paint between this release and the original mass retail one, but good god, do any of us really care? Let's distract ourselves from the trauma of war by taking a look at some accessories. Ironhide comes with his two as-seen-on-TV cannons, each of which being a unique sculpt, naturally. It seems like they're made from multiple parts each, as both the blue-gray and the black appear to be their base plastic colors, if you care about that sort of thing, I guess. Being such unique and character-specific weapons, they're only technically 5mm compatible, as they're pretty much solely meant to be mounted onto Ironhide's, and only Ironhide's, arms which means you'll most likely just be leaving them off to one side should you want to display him without his cannons instead of giving them to someone else. Fair enough, I suppose. At least those window shards I mentioned earlier cover up the cannon's hollowness, if only just, and their presence really helps make Ironhide's arms look a lot less frail, really bulking out his silhouette. Ironhide comes packed with 21 points of articulation, which sounds like a lot until you start trying to put him into a cool pose. On any other design, these butterfly joints would be considered a godsend, but alas, Ironhide's life preservers really limit their movement. It's like gifting a dog the most delicious piece of dark chocolate ever created. Sure, the gesture is nice until you think of the consequences. His elbows don't even bend more than 90 degrees, so no lifting montage for you. Things aren't much better below the belt, as Ironhide's knees are similarly limited, and the thigh to calf ratio isn't good enough to compensate. It doesn't help that his messy silver clod hoppers stick out so much as well. You can attempt to justify there being an extra point of articulation in each ankle, especially for walking poses, but since it clashes so readily with the vehicle mode, I'd have to respectfully disagree and call you a stupid idiot. So, there's a million dollar question, or however much Ironhide's going on the secondary market, hanging over our heads like the fucking Sword of Damocles. With how hard it was to find this toy on its original release, and with how much you have to pay to get its re-release, is he worth it? And to that I say, okay, give me a second, let me get ready. Fuck no! Taking a cursory look on eBay shows that even with the re-release, chumps are still asking astronomical prices for him, and even bigger chumps are paying them. 
I got in on the ground floor when it came to the Amazon 5-pack, and even then it was only worth it to me, because a friend of mine who actually had Ironhide went halvesies with me. I'm still trying to offload my spare ratchet. And even then, the rest of the 5-pack had abysmal quality control, with Bumblebee straight up being untransformable. So, unless you find it acceptable to get gypped by eBay sellers or Hasbro and Amazon themselves, I don't think I can tell you to go for it with good conscience. Still, the more important question for a review is, is the toy good? And to that I say, well, kinda. The truck mode is decent, the robot mode is okay, and the transformation is some pretty good fun. He rounds out and compliments the rest of the 2007 cast pretty nicely, and he definitely felt the best out of the reissue 5-pack, that's for damn sure. I'd say lovely would be a pretty fair assessment, wouldn't you agree? Ah, who gives a shit? You know who does give a shit? The fantastic users on my Discord server, who have graciously submitted some requests for future reviews that all of you get to vote on. Your choices are... Kingdom Cyclonus, and Legacy G-Axis. The poll can be found on my community tab, and you can submit your own requests by joining my server, linked in the description. If you liked this video or otherwise found it helpful or enjoyable, then please subscribe and leave a comment. This has been Kick Catastrophe, Transform, and Roll Out.